How to draw Sinead O'Connor with ink and graphite. I also use some white charcoal. This is a pretty easy drawing lesson, my friends. I have a link in the description below where you can download my stencil, and I also have a list of the supplies that I've used. So I hope you join along today. Let's draw. All right, let's draw Sinead O'Connor. I'll just let you know what supplies I'm using. I'm using a Bristol Smooth Visual Journal Pad. It's a smooth surface, and this one is 100 pounds, and it is nine by 12 inches. I also wanted to just mention at this point that my dog is next to me snoring, so you might hear that in the background. I've already transferred my stencil onto my canvas and in the description below I'll leave a link that you can click on so that you can um, download the stencil and print it out yourself. Now I'm going to show you what I use to transfer the stencil. I use graphite paper, okay? Graphite transfer paper. This one's white but I have a black one that I use as well. I just don't have the packaging anymore. This works so well. It's just like carbon copy paper. It works perfectly. But if you don't have graphite transfer paper, I have a video that I'll put in the uh, link, a link in the description below as well, and in the cards above to show you how you can easily do it with a graphite pencil. Now the supplies I'm using, I have graphite pencils. I have four different ones. I have 4B, 2B, HB, and this is called Extra Black, but it's the equivalent of a 6B. I also have some ink pens, just varying sizes. I'm going to put a list of supplies in the description below when I'm done so you know what I ended up using. I also have my basket filled with blending tools. I will mostly use probably this soft blender, S-O-F-F-T, that's the brand. It's um. A sponge blender and it works really well for graphite. I also have some blending stumps and tortillon blenders but like I said I will link all that in the description below. So let's begin. I wanted to mention that I have a little piece of wax paper that I put down so that I can rest my hand on it so I don't smudge everything all around me. So I have that next to me. So what I'm going to do I'm going to start with using my 6B pencil and I'm going to basically outline uh, Sinead. I'm going to completely outline her. I used to start doing this with ink pen, but I've graduated to doing this with pencil first because I don't want to put ink down when I would not be able to erase it after. Now I'm working from a reference photo that I found online, but I don't have the copyright to the reference photo, so I can't show you it. But I think if you do a Google image search for Sinead O'Connor, this is a very popular image that will come up if you want to do the reference. I always suggest having a reference photo when you're doing a drawing. That way you can kind of look at the reference photo as you go. And it, uh, it really helps you, not just with drawing the figure itself, but also with shading and where highlights are supposed to be. And I've said this many times on my channel before, I am not good at drawing hands. I really am not. So I'm sorry, Sinead, if I don't get your hand right here. I'm going to get her eyebrow shapes and this is by no means done okay and just fill in some of the areas so that it's easier for you to see this I think it should be easier for you to see once I have the uh, the dark in here there's my dog snoring I usually chit chat a lot while I'm drawing, but I really want to make sure that I I don't um, mess up this side here. Mm 
because there's a lot of little detail in her eye. These are her eyelashes coming out the side of her, her head there. So that's the outline of Sinead. I'm just going to take a quick look here to see if there's anything else I want to outline. My stomach is gurgling too. I have my supper on the stove. <laughs> my stomach is not happy with me. Probably should have eaten before I did this. Okay, so there's the outline of Sinead. I'm going to take my 0.8 fine liner and it's an ink pen and I'm going to just outline her eyes because I want to keep the detail of her eyes. She has beautiful, beautiful big eyes. You know, when I heard about her, her passing away, I, I just, uh, it saddened me because though I'm not one to be political or anything like that, she was, um, she had a very difficult life, you know, and this is a little tribute to her. I, I loved her voice. I didn't necessarily agree with her political views, but I did really love her voice. So I'm just outlining her eyebrows as well and I'm just going to put in the ink for now and I'll, I'll do the detail after. And I'm kind of winging what I'm doing here. I'm not too sure how this is going to turn out but I'm hoping for the best. She has some very obvious creases around her eyes. Her eyelashes, which again I will fix later. Add more detail to that. Now I'm going to continue with the um, the dark uh, the dark ink here. Just fill in a few areas of her eye that look very dark to me when I take a look at the um, the reference photo. Now this is going to be interesting here, what I'm doing here, because I don't want to put ink where ink does not belong. And I'll come in with the pencil later, later and I'll fix that up a little bit. Okay, I think so far so good with this. Now I'm going to work on her nose a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and her lips. Very dark area between her lips here. There we go. I'm going to put my wax paper down just so I don't smudge my hand and I'm going to work a little bit on her ears. She has a shadow around this side of her ear. And I'm doing this kind of minimally. I'm not trying to do an exact portrait of her because I do like to do things in a minimal way. So we're not going to see, you know, the full ear, I don't think. Though I have been known to change my mind <laughs> as I go along. But I think that when I do my drawings, the most important thing that I always focus on is what I think is the most stunning feature of the face. And for me, it's her eyes, definitely her eyes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm taking a look here. I'm going to grab my darkest pencil. This is my 6B equivalent. And I'm just going to start putting in some dark on her head. And I'm going to just do a little bit of outline here just to give myself a reference. Now I'm going to be blending all this in so you won't, uh, you won't see the lines, but it's just to give myself a reference because the way her hair is in the picture, it's very dark around the edges. And then there's a sort of a mid-tone in the middle here. Around her ear. And then there's another that's a little too long. I'm just going to erase that line. Her hairline doesn't come down that far. Her hairline comes down to about halfway down her, her fingers here. I have about this much of a gap here, so I have to erase this line here. This is what you do when you're drawing from a photo. I just have a little paintbrush here that I use to wipe off eraser bits. Um, you have to continually look at your reference photo to really understand where everything goes, you know? So that, that's the dark area. There's a mid-tone here. There's a slightly lighter mid-tone around here. And then she's got a little bit of hair. And when I say hair, we know she has had a shaved head. So she's got just a little bit here and very light here. All right. So what I'm going to start doing is just applying my... 6B equivalent right now to that area that I stenciled out there. And I'm turning my pencil once in a while just so that I don't wear it down all on one side. And when we start blending, it's really going to look nice. At least I hope so. <laughs> Now the next one I'm taking is my 4B pencil. Now if you don't know, the B stands for black and with regards to the HB, it stands for hard. So HB is hard black and the harder the pencil, the lighter the, the, um, the shade. So a 6B would be a much darker shade than a 2B. But I'm using the 4B now because I'm trying to, you know, have a little bit of a gradient tone going on here. And I think, I'm looking at the picture, yeah, this is a little darker. And now I'm going to take my 2B, 
and just add a little 2B right here. And then my HB, which is my lightest graphite pencil here. And I'm applying it quite softly. Okay, now I'm not gonna blend just yet. But what I'm going to do is start looking at areas around her face. I have my 6B pencil again, and I'm just going to put in some shading everywhere. Just according to what I see in my drawing. I have a black and white drawing of her, not drawing of a reference photo, black and white reference photo. I might go in with the uh, ink again later and fix all that up a little bit. The great thing about graphite pencils is that you can always erase it if you don't like what you've done. Now I'm going to try to give her a little nose here. I think she, I was a little bigger. For me, this is, you know, it's all about shading. You can make a really nice, you can draw a really nice face, you know, but if you don't give it some shading, it kind of, I don't know, it looks a little bit more like a cartoon, I think. Okay, I'm up here on my fingers. around her eye. It's a little darker on her hand because it's in the shadow. All right, I'm going to take my 2B pencil now and continue just adding some more shading where I feel it needs to be shaded a little bit. My dog is coughing a lot. He has a he has a little problem in his nose and his throat, so he does cough a lot. And I hope that's not bothering anybody. <laughs> My little boy is uh, not doing too well, but he'll be okay. He's on medication to help him out a little bit, you know. I'm just going to grab my 6B pencil again, the darker one, add a little darker shading under her lip on her chin here. And back to the 2B.
now for my HB. I'm putting this pretty much a very light coat all over her face. And I'm going very, very lightly because I don't want to see any pencil marks, though I will be blending it. And if I don't like it, I can always just erase it. as well. There we go. Now I'm going to just do a first blending. I've got my soft eraser, eraser, soft blender here. And I'm just going to start gently, gently blending. And I'm going to finish off the blending with a blending stump. Pretty sure I'm going to use that. But I just wanted to start blending to give you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's all finished. These um, soft foam blenders, they work really, really well with graphite. Especially the HB. So we don't see those lines, you know. you can take your time blending too. You don't have to press down very hard when you're using one of these things. If you press down too hard, it's going to start ripping. And I don't know if you noticed in my blending basket here, look at all these. This all came with it. I've never had to change it because <laughs> I don't press down too hard. I will have to change it soon though because it's really filled with graphite there, but... I'm just going over everywhere that I had the HB, the lightest dark, the lightest black, just to make sure I don't see any of the pencil lines. Now we do see the pencil lines with the darker graphite pencils, but that's all right. That's why I've got my other blending tools. looking pretty good so far. I'm going to be adding black all the way around by the way so it's not going to stay that color but now I'm going to grab my blending stump and I'm just going to start blending and I'm pressing down very lightly When you use a blending stump, once in a while you have to wipe it off because sometimes it gets really, really filled with graphite and it stops blending very well. So just keep that in mind as you're going along. The blending process can take some time. So take your time doing it because you want your drawing to look really, really nice, you know. We don't really want to see pencil marks. It's starting to blend very well and we want the shades to blend together, you know. We don't want it to look like a layer of dark and then a layer of light right next to it. Why we take the time to blend. 
And there are so many things you can use to blend with. I mean, I have this piece of paper towel. I could just take it and start blending that way, you know? Usually I do that at the end to sort of mix the layers in together, but that works pretty well too. I just really like the blending stump, so that's what I'm going to continue using. And we're going to go and put in some detail after. Maybe use some erasers to try to erase some things that we don't want to see in the drawing. my stomach again. <laughs> it's really growling. This one has, I'll try this side. That's a bit better. All right, I'm going to gently go around her eyes. I have to wipe this off. It's really, really filled with graphite here. All right. Another reason why you don't want to press too hard when you're blending with a, a blending stump is that it will be hard to apply anything over it if it's if you've pressed down too hard. So keep that in mind as you're blending. If you want to add more graphite, you can always add ink, that's not an issue, but if you want to add more graphite, you have to be careful how much force you use with your blending stump. I'm going to grab my soft blender again and go over everything one more time. Just to make sure it's really nicely blended.
I switched to a different blending stump because I think the one that I had was um, a little too filled with graphite and I have to just take it and properly clean it or maybe scrape some of the sides off or something because it wasn't really doing a great job blending. But this one's doing a better job here, I think. Yeah, it's doing a little bit of a better job here. Now let's do a little bit of detail. I'm going to take, I have a 0 0.05. It's hard to see because it's not in focus, but there we go. Maybe that's easier to see. 0 0.05 fine liner. And that just means that it's, it's a very, very fine tip. So I want to go and sort of put in a little bit of detail in her, on her head. And I, I hope I'm not going to mess things up here, but she's got a bit, I'm trying to see here, her part line would be about here. I'm just going to put just little dashes kind of. It's going to be very, very light, but I want to put some detail in her hair because she had the shaved head and you can kind of see it's all stubbly, you know? So this might take me a little bit, but I want to kind of do it right. And I'm going along with her, the way her hair is growing. Like right here, it would be down this, like this. Towards her ear. And then all from here, from this part here, it kind of follows down this way. And I don't want it to be in lines. I kind of want it to be, you know, I don't want to have a line make it look like that. I want it to be, what is the word I'm looking for? Diverse, maybe. Random. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. I want the lines to look a little random. The little dashes that I'm making here. And these ones on this side, they go the other way like this kind of, you know. Hope you're able to see what I'm doing here. But I, if you can't, you know, if it's not that obvious in the video, I think you kind of get the point, right? You know what I'm doing here. This is just very, very small detail that I'm putting in. And I will continue to do this for her whole head. When she first came out in, was it the 1980s? My screen just went off. There we go. Um, yeah, in the 1980s when she came out and she showed that short hair, 
you know. Um, there were a lot of young ladies who shaved their heads for that style. I was one of them. <laughs> but I didn't shave it, you know, so that you could see my scalp. I shaved it, but there was some hair left, you know. It was very, very short. I really liked it. And back then I had dyed it a dark purple. <laughs> I think it was... Uh, the hair color was called eggplant. All right, so I'm just going to take a look here at the photo in front of me. She's got some darker areas on the top of her head here. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a thicker tip. This is a 0 0.3, okay, 0 0.3, and I'm going to go and just put some dark detail around the top of her head. and around here, where her head meets her hand, just to differentiate a little bit. And over here, around her ear, too. It's a little darker. All right. Now let me take a look here. Maybe just around this ear, too. This side of the ear, I mean. It's a little darker here. Now, what else do I want to do? I want to do something with this eyebrow because it's quite thick. It comes down to about here. And I'm still using my 0 0.3. She has very thick eyebrows. There we go. And this one I colored in completely because in the photo itself, it's hard to see the actual hair, but I'm going to add a little bit just to make it look slightly more realistic. Because she doesn't, you know, we don't want her to look like Groucho Marx with his, the way he used to draw on his eyebrows. With a, I think he put black tape or he would put draw a black marker on his eyebrows to make them look that way. We don't want her to look that way. I could actually go a little thicker looking at her draw her photo. There we go. That's a little better. Now I'm taking a look at her eyes, which are so sad looking. Sinead. She's 
She has a deep crease in that eye. And we'll give her a little more detail here where her eyelashes are supposed to be. You can see a few of them once in a while popping out, but for the most part they're down. And let me see here. There we go. That's one eye. I might put a little bit more shading there too. I'm going to see. But now this eye, let me see if I can do anything here. There's that really dark crease here. It goes right to the side of her face. And Now I'm just going to take my dark 6B pencil here because I don't want to do this part in ink. I want to see what it looks like because I don't like the way I did her eye. There is a white spot there, but this is all quite dark. I think that looks all right, so I will go ahead and put some ink in there. There we go. And it is quite dark. Let's see here. Okay. That eye is a lot darker. Now I'm going to try to fix this one a little bit. I've got my 6B because this part here is quite dark inside of her eye there. That looks a little more realistic and there isn't as much white showing here. There we go. Okay. So far so good. I've got my 6B again and I'm going to try to do a little bit of shading around her nose. Very light shading here. And under her lip really, under her nose between her, her lips. There. Now I'm going to work on her ear a little bit to see if Maybe I could add some ink to that. Okay. And I'm just adding detail now, my friends. I hope you're following along. If, you, if you're following along, I would love to see what you came up with. Ears are not my specialty either. <laughs> I'm just not good at this. I can um, make an eye look nice, but when it comes to ears, I'm just oh, I'm not good at that at all. I've still got my 0.3. Okay, and I'm going to try not to make her ear look too bad here. Okay. 
maybe I should just leave it as is, huh? <laughs> All right, so um, next up, I want to take my 6B, the dark one, the dark pencil, and put in some darker shading here. And a little bit here and here. And definitely under her eye. She looks very tired in this drawing. Okay, let me just go in with the blending stump. I'm going to grab, I have this mechanical eraser, and I want to take out some of the um, dark that I put here. It just doesn't seem, seems like I went a little too high, so I'm just going to erase that very lightly. Okay, and maybe a little bit around this side of her nose. I'm just kind of blending so that it doesn't look completely white, you know. And what I'm going to do actually is take my paper towel and blend with the paper towel just really softly to try to erase whatever eraser marks are there because I don't want them really to show. Now I've got my 6B again. I want to go around her nose again because I think I erased a little too much. But I just want it to be very light. I like this side of her nose. She's got a little bit of shading here though in, in her nostril. And maybe around the tip of her nose here there's a little bit of darkness. And around here, a little cleft under her nose. So let me take my blending stump. And I'll just blend those areas in. Okay. Now I'm going to work on her lips. I've got my 0 0.3, and I'm really taking a good look at her lips. She's got some lines in her lips. And on the top as well. She's just got a few lines in her lips there. I want to make them stand out a little more too. And on this side. I'm going to take my 6B and make it make her lip a little higher with the 6B and make sure that I'm not messing it up, you know, before I put ink down. Because this side's quite dark. She has a little shadow here. And under her lips here, there's a shadow. I've got a smaller blending stump here that I'm going to use to blend that part in. Alright, 
then I'll blend in her upper lip there. All right, that's good. I'm going to take my ink, just very lightly outline that side of her, her lip. Maybe put a little darker area underneath here. Okay. Now what's left to do is a little more shading. I've got this dark 6B color again, not color, uh, pencil. And I'm going to put in a little more darkness in certain areas. that soft blender to blend that together. And then I'll probably come in with the blending stump as well. Because the soft blender works really, really well with the HB, but I find that it, it doesn't work that well with the darker shades of graphite. And now I'm pressing down quite quite a bit with the blending stump because I really, really want it to blend nicely. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 2B and I'm just going to very gently go around the entire drawing here to make the background a little darker and then I'm going to blend it and then do a little bit more detail and highlighting because I'm not too crazy about her hairline here and her neck the way it looks right now so so I don't wear it all down. That's a really a good tip to give you when you're using graphite or even coloring pencils and you're coloring in. Always turn the pencil because if it wears down all on one side it could break the tip and then you kind of waste your your art supplies. So, you know, these things are expensive. here without my pencil falling off. just trying to get the whole background penciled in here. There we go. All right, I'm going to take the blending stump and just go over all of that very lightly. Thank you. 
My page is moving a lot. I should have taped it down. Try to hold it down for you so it doesn't move around in an annoying fashion. Okay, what I want to do is add some dark around her lower part of her chin and around her neck. I want it to be quite dark here. I want to be careful though because I don't want to get this onto her face or on her arms. Worst case, I could always erase, right? But I don't want to have to, if, you know, because then I have to start re-blending. Mostly I use the eraser for highlighting when I'm doing graphite and ink drawings. Just a little dark here too. All right, I'm gonna use my blending stump just to blend that lightly. My fingerprints all over the place. <laughs> I think it looks better darker. I'm going to decide if I want to do that around her entire head or not, but I still want to fix that hairline. I'm not happy with it, so I'm thinking about that as I do this. Let me take a look through the camera lens. Yeah, it looks much better darker down here, so I will probably do dark all the way around. I'm going to go and do that now. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to be careful though, because I really don't want my pencil marks to show, so I have to use a light touch. I just have to go over it a couple of times. Because, you know, when you're doing large areas, especially after you're you know, you're almost done. Sometimes the tendency is to want to rush through the end, but just don't rush it. I don't mind if I get a little bit of dark into the top of her head because the top of her head is quite dark. <laughs> and I will go ahead and blend that. I think it 
looks better darker. Like I said, I'm not too happy with her hair right now, so I have to do something with that. I'm going to take that 0.3 ink pen and I am going to add some more dark little bits here, little dashes. Just to show, you know, her hairline a little bit more. dogs up. <laughs> and I'm probably going to add some more graphite here. I'm just wondering if her hair actually goes down a little more here. Like this. like that and then maybe a little lower down here so I'm going to take my 6B pencil again, the dark one, and add more dark up here and around her ear. Now I want to show you something. It's a little trick that I have. I wasn't very happy about all the marker marks that I put up here, so I took out my white charcoal pencil and I went over that area to kind of hide the marker marks. They're still there, but they're not as obvious because if you look at a person's head, they don't have a complete hairline like that. There's always a spot that kind of goes up. A little bit and there's a little less hair there or it's very very light so that's why I'm using the white charcoal pencil because I want to kind of create that area here in her hair so that it's not as stark you know there I'm just making it a little it kind of blends it a little better you know so I suppose this isn't just ink and graphite after all <laughs> And I'm doing that across her whole hairline just so it blends a little nicer. There we go. I think that looks a little better. And I'm going to add a little darker color here. And I'm going to grab my 4B, put a little bit of shading here as well. And then my 2B. Kind of what I did before. And I'm just going to blend all of that with my blending stump. I'll start with the darker areas. And I may have to go back and put in a little more of that white charcoal if I accidentally erase it with the blender. And 
and I am pressing down quite hard right now because I don't want the areas to look like, you know, bands of dark, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And I didn't put any graphite in the middle here. I'm just kind of pulling in some from the darker areas. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eraser, my mechanical eraser, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to create highlights that way instead of trying to do them with the pencil and different layers of, not layers, but different uh, shades of the black. I'm just going to go in and create highlights where I want things to be a little bit lighter. And that would be around here especially. In the photo that I have, and like I said, if you, if you just do an image search on Google for Sinead O'Connor, you'll see this one. It'll come up for sure. And you'll see on the reference photo that um, it's very light here. You can actually see part of her scalp, scalp here. So it's just making it, you know, just a little lighter. And I'm going to go in and blend that a little so that you don't see all the eraser marks here. And I'm looking and I'm just trying to put some highlighting where I think it belongs according to the reference photo. Now I'm just going to take my paper towel and just do a little, little light blending, just so it's not so obvious that I have eraser marks everywhere. And like I said, I had probably erased some of that white pastel, or not pastel, charcoal, so I'm going to put that back in there. Okay, and what I want to do... Why don't I do a little bit more here? Okay. I'm still not happy with her hairline, so I'm going to try again to erase a little bit more. I'm really erasing very lightly. but I'm going to leave the, the whole crown of her head very, very dark. So there, that just gives it a little bit more interest, I think, instead of being like, you know, a band of black color on her head. Okay, back with the paper towel just to blend slightly and I'll wipe all those bits off there. Now just doing some detail work here on her lips. I'm going to make the bottom lip just a little bit darker around the bottom of the lip. Okay and I'm going to blend that in with my little blending stump here. And I've got my eraser and again I'm going to put in just a few little highlights on the bottom of her lip. Just a few. The top, well, just a little bit of a highlight here. But otherwise her, the top of her lip is quite dark in the photo just going to fix up her eye a little bit around here. It's a little dark. And I've got my little blending stump that I'm going to go in and blend that in. All right. I'm 
going to do a little bit more shading here. I've got my HB. And I'm going to put a little bit more shading here. And also above this side of her head, above her eyebrow. It's just a little, a little slight shading. And her nose is okay. Here too, it's a little darker. And for this, I'll grab the soft foam blender. I'm pressing down quite light. There's that little spot under her eyebrow too. I'm going to take my blending stump to finish that off here. I'm just going to go in and fix up um, the hand a little bit, her hand, just so we don't see all these pencil marks. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to take my white charcoal and try to make these lines in her neck just a little bit less dark if I can. They are creases in her neck, but I don't want them to be so stark black, you know what I mean? want them to be a little more natural looking. Now I don't know if this is really going to make a difference, but... And I'm going to go in with my blending stump, just where I had some pencil marks showing before. I'm just kind of getting rid of those. Because now that I'm pretty much done here, I can press hard and I don't have to worry about adding more layers of graphite over these. Well, my friends, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, the only thing that I really need to work on in, in general is ears and hands. <laughs> I'm not very good at them, but I had a great time doing this, and I hope you followed along, and if you did, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, my friends, and I'll see you next time on Rain Francis Art. Bye!